Hi guys, it's me, Nez. I'm going to read this article um, posted on ufospotlight.wordpress.com. I'm going to leave it, the link in the description box so that you can go back and read it if you, if you like. All right. Corona Unmasked. Chinese intelligence officer reveals true magnitude of China's fake coronavirus crisis. February 13th, 2020. Corona unmasked Chinese intelligence intelligence officer reveals true magnitude of China's fake coronavirus crisis by, and that's the author's name, but it's edited by Robert D. Morningstar of UFO Spotlight. Okay, so what that in Chinese, the Chinese characters, what it's saying is Wuhan virus was dropped. So that's the alias. To free the Chinese people for the good and general welfare of the chinese people and the world permission is hereby granted to copy quote or reproduce this article with a link back in full or in part with the hope that these revelations will help to free the chinese populace and the citizens of hong kong from the evil that has befallen them I am a senior Chinese military intelligence officer, and I know the truth about the coronavirus, quote unquote, outbreak. It is far worse than the media are telling you. I am a Chinese citizen in Wuhan who occupies or perhaps occupied a high ranking position in the military intelligence. I am also a member of the Chinese Communist Party. As a senior official near the top of the party, I have access to a great deal of classified information and I have been involved in many top secret government projects. I have a doctorate from a leading university in a Western country, which is why I'm able to write my account in English. I have information that I believe could lead to the overthrow of my government. It is also relevant to billions of people outside of China, all of whom are now in existential peril. It will not surprise you to hear that if my identity were to be revealed, my life would be in grave danger, as would those of my wife and son. I ask you to respect the fact that I have stripped out of this account all facts that would make it easy to identify me. By now, you will be familiar with the recent outbreak of 2019 NCOV, also known as NCP, or simply coronavirus, quote unquote. You will have heard that it originated in Wuhan, an industrial city in China, and that it came from an animal, most likely a bat or a pangolin, that was sold in a wild animal market. You will have been told that it is an influenza-like illness that can, in severe cases, cause pneumonia, respiratory failure, and death. Finally, you may have heard that although the disease is highly infectious, it is dangerous only to the elderly or to those who have a compromised immune system. The official lethality rate is approximately 2% or so. All of that is a bunch of lies concocted by the Chinese state with the tacit support of the U.S. deep state and its friends in the European Union, Russia, and Australia, and spread by the docile media in all of those countries. Let me start by telling you that the world does not operate the way you think it does. Although countries like the U.S. and China vie for global dominance, that competition is restricted to certain limited areas. In most ways, the two countries are more interested in cooperation so that they can stop other competing countries from gaining more power. They also have a shared interest in keeping real power out of the hands of their ordinary citizens. To this end, they have many different mechanisms by which they control the overwhelming majority of their media outlets. The Americans in particular have perfected the art of creating made-up divisions, quote-unquote, between their two main parties, which are designed to hide the fact that both serve the same masters. 
these same nations also possess technology that is far more advanced than you can imagine and which is kept carefully hidden from public view. This includes advanced artificial intelligence capable of undermining and deciding any election in the world, biological and chemical agents that can manipulate and control the thinking patterns and behaviors of citizens to terrifying degrees, highly sophisticated manipulation techniques using hypnotic practices entirely unknown to the public, and other things that I will not go into now. My point is that the great nations do not compete so much as work together. Their principal goal is to shield the true workings of the world from the uninitiated public. <clears throat> Let me return to the virus. Last year, large-scale anti-government protests erupted in Hong Kong. The Standing Committee of the Chinese Communist Party considered these to be a grave threat to the integrity and stability of the motherland. The U.S. government and the EU both knew that the Chinese were secretly working on a biological agent that was supposed to make the protesters docile and obedient. Without going into detail, I worked on that project. We tried to develop a sort of spray that could be dispersed from helicopters or drones and that would lead to mental retardation and behavioral change. Naturally, as Hong Kong is one of the most open and international cities in the world, the party decided that it was too risky to release the agent in Hong Kong without first testing it. For this, it needed a great number of human guinea pigs. Two groups were identified for this. First, we rounded up a large number of so-called Islamic radicals in Zhejiang province and took them to what we called training camps. We had already been using these camps for human experiment experimentation for several years, but the Hong Kong protests meant that we redoubled our efforts. We exposed the inmates to various alpha experimental agents. As these were orderless and invisible, the subjects were not aware that they were taking part in medical trials. The resulting high rates of cancer, premature dementia, suicidal depression, and death by organ failure could easily be suppressed as the camps are located in very remote parts of our motherland. Once the initial experiments had yielded a beta agent, it was transported to Hubei province where it was deployed in a special military testing facility outside the city of Wuhan. This was not even a particularly well-kept secret. The existence of this facility has been reported in, in international news. Even the fact that it is located close to the wild animal market is a known fact. By then, our president had already introduced a social credit system that allowed us to identify disloyal, counter-revolutionary, and Burgoyne elements in our society. Using the social credit scores, which are taken from online activity, electronic shopping behavior, and reports from informers in civil society, we selected some of the worst offenders. These included human rights, lawyers, and activists, Christians, homosexuals, artists, intellectuals, people who speak foreign languages, and other undesirables. Once these troublemakers had been collected and placed in the testing facility, we exposed them to the agent, which is biochemical in nature, and spread in an invisible aerosol akin to certain viruses. Initial results were encouraging and we saw significant cognitive decline and a reduction in higher mental processing facilities. Essentially, our undesirables were becoming mildly mentally disabled, which is precisely the effect we wanted to produce in order to pacify the restive population of Hong Kong. Unfortunately, 
it quickly became apparent that the agent also had other effects. About one week after the retardation set in, our subjects developed major anxiety and panic attacks. Eventually, they developed symptoms akin to those of paranoid schizophrenics. At that point, their bodies rapidly (laughs) deteriorated or deteriorated. They developed massive internal bleeding, the walls of their arteries dissolved, they bled out of their eyes and orifices, and their tissue disintegrated. To put it in a more direct Western manner, they started to melt. Death usually occurred through multiple organ failure. This was preceded by at least five days of severe agony, which could not be alleviated by painkillers. It was at this time that I first violated our protocol. One subject, an elderly lady who had published defamatory cartoons of our president, begged me for death with such insistence that I took pity and shot her. I was reprimanded, but fortunately the complaint was dropped when I agreed to reimburse the cost of the bullet. I swore to myself never again to show such unnecessary emotion. We decided that our agent was unusable. It was far too destructive for our purposes. We wanted the population of Hong Kong to submit to us. We did not want to exterminate it. Naturally, our American friends had by then taken an interest in our work and asked us for a sample for their own research and testing purposes. They hinted that they wished to use it to resolve certain difficulties in Venezuela. Normally, we would have agreed as we maintained friendly relations with the CIA, but given the extremely toxic nature of the agent, we declined. This, as it turned out, was a grave mistake. The CIA was convinced that we had developed something very powerful and wanted to keep it to ourselves. They offered a great deal of money to one of our researchers. Foolishly, he agreed to sell them a specimen. We found out just in time for the handover and tried to stop it from happening. In the ensuing shootout, don't bother to look at look for it in the news. It was never reported anywhere. Several dozen people were killed. More importantly, however, the agent escaped. The shootout took place at the wild animal market, which has been reported as a location of the animal to human transmission that started the outbreak. But of course, there was no such transmission. It was just the location where the CIA was supposed to receive the sealed vial containing the agent. The vial shattered when it was dropped by the traitor who had agreed to sell it to the Americans. By now, I understand you will be skeptical. If I really am who I say I am, why would I be sharing this information on the internet? Let me assure you that I am no friend of the Western system of governance. I love my motherland, and I am loyal to the Communist Party. It has lifted hundreds of millions of my compatriots out of squalor and poverty. However, I am also a human being, and I have a conscience. Most importantly, I have a wife and a son. Once we realized that the agent had escaped and would start to spread, we swiftly put all of Wuhan into lockdown. I was one of those tasked to manage the fallout of the contamination. Of course, we could not keep such a huge undertaking secret, so we decided to order out, order our state media to report that a coronavirus, quote-unquote, had broken out in Wuhan. In reality, of course, there is no coronavirus. It was all made up. It was one of my colleagues who came up with the genius idea of pretending that people with the common flu suffered from the coronavirus. This allowed us to hide the true nature of the disease. Let me explain. It is currently flu season in China. When we realized that we could no longer control the spread of the agent, we sent our men to all the hospitals and and instructed all doctors to diagnose every case of the common flu as coronavirus. 
we came up with a new name, 2019 NCOV, and handed out fact sheets, quote unquote, that described a made up illness. The result of this decision was that was that tens of thousands of individuals who were simply suffering from a cold or flu were now diagnosed as having a mysterious coronavirus that, although infectious, was not often lethal. While this frightened the public, it allowed us to push the narrative that the disease was not that deadly. It also gave us time to prepare for the catastrophe that was sure to come by imposing a lockdown on Wuhan and other cities in Hubei province. You have not heard this in the news, and given the size of Wuhan with its population of 11 million, it is not known even to many of the residents. But within days, thousands upon thousands were infected, and before long they suffered the agonizing deaths that I have already described. Within a week, there were so many corpses that we did not know what to do with them. So we ordered the surviving social credit prisoners to drive the bodies into the countryside and bury them in mass graves. But it was very difficult to keep this activity secret. And we could not even keep up as there were so many corpses. We planted a story that 5 million residents had fled Wuhan. In reality, of course, many of those people had died from the agent. I was working around the clock, helping to orchestrate this cover-up. When I think back to my actions now, I feel great shame. At the time, I still believed that I was fighting for my motherland, and that the rule of the party was right and just, but deep down, I had already begun to have doubts. My faith in the party was shaken even more deeply when I learned what had happened to Dr. Li Wenliang. Dr. Li Wenliang was one of the few doctors who refused falsely to diagnose flu patients with the coronavirus. As a punishment, he was sent to help transport dead bodies to mass graves. The expectation was that he would be infected with the agent and die an agonizing death. But to our great surprise, he did not contract the illness. You have, of course, read that he died of coronavirus. You have been misinformed. A sergeant of the People's Armed Police injected him with a mixture of heroin and mercury that caused his lungs to deflate. When I found out about this, I became unsure whether or not I was doing the right thing. While I believe that it is appropriate for a government to rule with a severe hand, I do not think that it was right to kill Dr. Lee. He was a compassionate and kind man, and he cared about his patients. How can our motherland not benefit from having such a doctor? I shared my concerns with my wife, but she convinced me that I should not say anything to my superiors. She said that it was too dangerous, that they valued loyalty above everything else, and that I would only find trouble if I admitted to my doubts about their practices. She also pointed out that, we benefit from priority medical treatment. As senior officials, we received regular supplies of the highly sophisticated hazmat masks that are the only known technology that can prevent inf infection. She implored me to think of our son, who is still small. If I spoke out and were caught, our lives would be at risk. Around the same time, it became clear that the agent was entirely beyond our control. It was spreading like wildfire throughout the Hubei province and beyond, infecting tens of millions and causing them all to die. I understand that what I just said is difficult to believe because you have been told that there have been only about 50,000 infections and far fewer deaths. But these are the influenza infections that have been falsely passed off as the, as the non-existent coronavirus. The agent is far, far more contagious than that. And its fatality rate, unlike the coronavirus, is not 2%. <laughs> no, its fatality rate is 100%. 100%. Nobody recovers from it. Everybody who contracts it dies, and a lot of people are contracting it. Hubei province lies in ruins.
The various travel restrictions and lockdowns that have been imposed were not created to stop the spread of the agent. None of them can stop it. Not embargoes, not face masks or hand sanitizer, but to stop the survivors from seeing the catastrophe with their own eyes. I am part of the greatest cover up in human history. The hiding of the deaths of tens of millions. Very soon, Hubei province will be no more than a giant mortuary, and the truth will come out. For me, the turning point came when the party told yet another lie. And that lie was too dreadful even for me to accept. You may have heard that China built a new hospital called Huo Shenshen Hospital in Wuhan in order to provide additional quarantine and, uh, and isolation facilities for infected patients. You may have heard that they built it in only 10 days. That too is a lie. Sure, they did build something in six days, but it was not a hospital. The true nature of the building was considered top secret. Initially, I was naive enough to believe that the party was demonstrating its compassion and care for the people. But then, my superior sent me to Hyoshinshan. I was shown around the installation by a military police officer called Corporal Meng. This is not his real name. It was there that I saw the truth. As I have mentioned, the only way to protect oneself from the agent is by wearing a special protective mask that is entirely unlike those available commercially. Even medical professionals do not have access to it. It is available only to biomedical warfare researchers and it contains extremely advanced technology. These masks need to be kept at a particular temperature to offer full protection and lose their effectiveness very quickly. As I have also already said, one of the benefits of my position was that both my family and I had access to regular supplies, which is why we're, which is why we're safe from compa we're safe when compared to civilians, doctors, and even lower level government officials, all of whom wore utterly ineffective surgical masks in the misguided belief that they would protect them. And so wearing this special equipment, I went to Hyoshinshan with Corporal Meng. Whatever you want to call that place, it is not a hospital. Sure, the entrance looks like a hospital, and in the ward at the front of the complex, there are what appear to be normal medical beds. They're there, Thousands of infected patients lie, all of them in early stages of the disease. I walked along those long, white corridors next to Corporal Meng, his angular face dispassionate in his military fatigues, and saw hundreds upon hundreds of identical hospital beds on which squirmed the terrified and diseased inhabitants of Wuhan. Their cries and pleas haunt me, in the long nights in which I now am unable to sleep. But this was merely the beginning. Eventually, the corporal took me to the rear of this front section. There, locked metal gates led to what he called the middle section. The patients in the front are unaware of its existence. It is there that the more advanced cases are kept in what most closely resembles a mental asylum. Immediately, upon entering this part of Huoshenshan, I was struck by the dim light lighting and stench of vomit and human waste. Here, the unfortunates roamed freely, their minds gradually disintegrating in endless panic attacks and psychotic episodes. Here, too, there were no more doctors, merely gorilla-faced men in black uniforms who belonged to some secret branch of the military police I had never heard of. They appear to have been selected for their cruelty, for they beat and degraded the patients in the most sadistic manner.
Many of the inmates had regressed to childlike states and lay on the floor weeping like infants and begging for compassion that they did not receive. There was cruel pleasure in the eyes of those thugs as they brutalized the unfortunates. They beat them with batons, sprayed pepper spray into their eyes, and kicked them with their steel-capped boots. As I was from the military intelligence, the guards did not even attempt to hide their activities. They even invited me to join. In every way, they treated me as one of them. Yes, one of them. I stood in the gray staff bathroom of Huo Shen Shen and looked into a cheap mirror and asked myself, is this really what you are? Are you really like them? But the violence was not merely an expression of sit, sit, sad, sadism, for the poor inmates were not there to be cared for. They were there to work. There was one more set of doors and beyond them lay what the corporal called the core and it was there that i saw it piles and piles of dead bodies stacked on top of one another all the way to the ceiling there were men women and children elderlies and toddlers rich and poor beautiful and misshapen proud and humble they were all of them dead our agent made no distinction between any of them. I gasped when the corporal led me to the core. I cannot count how many there were, but it was many, many thousands. And in the midst of the piles of corpses was a kind of path. And I heard a roaring sound in the distance. The miserable patients from the middle section picked up the dead and carried and dragged them away into the dark, even as the guards beat them with the trunk, truncheons. I, or truncheons, I, it took me a little while before I grasped what was happening. I simply could not believe what lay at the end of that path in the core. It was an enormous furnace with great fires roaring within. One by one, their minds destroyed and their bodies twisted. The dying men and women carried the corpses to the furnace and cast them inside in a, in a doomed attempt to hide the dreadful truth. I saw several of them collapse from exhaustion, only for their lifeless bodies to be added to the mountains of corpses on both sides. In a seemingly endless line, they went, their mas emaciated bodies clad in gray overalls, their backs bent under the weight of their dreadful cargo. Many howled and groaned in terror, and their voices joined in a sorrowful cacophony that lingered over the roar of the fires. In deep shock, I stared at the boundless horror before me. Beside me stood Corporal Meng, his freshly shaved face as emotionless as before. When I turned to face him, he looked at me. His mouth smiled, but his eyes did not. We used the energy to operate Hu Shen Shen. He said, we saved the state considerable resources in this way. And look, he waved at the gallery of the dead. There are so many of them here. You could almost describe it as renewable energy. He laughed and waved his hand in a strangely camp gesture. I stood speechless and stared at the infernal scenes before me. Men in black uniforms screamed like demons at the wretches who were disposing of the corpses for them. They stripped the dead of anything that had value, jewelry, cash, expensive clothing, and tossed these items onto an enormous pile next to the furnace. When I asked the corporal what would be done with the items, they said that they would be used to pay for the health care expenses, quote-unquote, incurred by this patient's stay in Huishenshen. I vomited in the toilet. When I flushed and came out of the stall, Corporal Meng stood by the door and looked at me. His face was as blank as before. But in his eyes, I thought I registered a very faint trace of contempt. You are ten years my senior, the look said, but you are soft. I thanked him for his service and went home.
When I arrived, I saw that I had received hundreds of updates on the encrypted device the party uses to communicate to insiders. The news were unimaginably grim. The State Legal and Economic Commission had allocated funds for the construction of dozens of facilities like Hu Shenzhen all throughout China. The agent had spread not only to every single province of the motherland, but to most other nations in the world. Fortunately, we had agreements in place with other governments. They agreed to pretend that the infections were due to a coronavirus. They were just as worried as we were that a panic might break out in their countries. The Americans in particular were terrified that the S&P 500 might decline. This, they said, would be unacceptable in an election year, so we could count on their full support. Of course, the World Health Organization also helped us. For a long time, the only issue with the WHO has been that we have been locked in a contest with the Americans about who bribes them more. They released all sort of, sorts of sophisticated misinformation about having decoded the DNA of the so-called coronavirus. All this has allowed us to stave off a global panic for now. Yet the situation was worsening with astonishing speed. I am reluctant to reveal too much on this point, as it would make it too easy for my enemies to identify me. But we quickly began to implement measures to protect our most senior leaders. If you look at the world news, you will see that Xi Jinping, our president, disappeared for approximately one week after the outbreak, before being seen again with the leader of Cambodia. You should know that the person who met the Cambodian leader was not President Xi. It was a body double who had for many years been trained to look and sound just like our president. President Xi is, of course, not careless enough to risk his own death. He is safely ensconced in a secret bunker underneath Zhongnanhai, the headquarters of the party in Beijing. Nor was he the only leader who is in hiding. In fact, I can assure you that over half of all senior party members are currently being imitated by trained actors who are following instructions given to them via special implants. Do you really think that our prime min minister would risk his life by going to Wuhan? All of this means that our government has become utterly paralyzed and the functions of the state have been taken over by the military. It became clear to me that our efforts were pointless. Yes, the lockdowns, travel bans, and targeted assassinations of rebellious journalists allowed us to hide the true situation in Wuhan, but I knew that this would not last. Once the mass deaths begin in the rest of the world, in our estimation, this should happen within the next week or so. Everyone will know the truth. It will become clear that we cannot protect ourselves from the agent. Surgical masks, hand sanitizer, gloves, nothing can stop it. Nothing except the special hazmat masks but those cannot be produced in anything like sufficient quantities. You, an ordinary person, will never even receive one, let alone a sufficient number to see you through the coming, the coming Holocaust. For those of you reading this, therefore, all I can suggest is that you keep your loved ones close to you. Hug them. Tell them what they mean to you. Enjoy the time you have left with them. It is not typical in Chinese culture to express one's feelings in this way, but I have learned the importance of such gestures. I promised my wife that I would show this document to her before I posted it, yet I broke my word. I hear her weeping loud. I hear her weep in loud hoarse sobs in the bedroom, and the keyboard of my laptop is wet with my own tears. Not long ago, we received results of the regular tests that are part of our priority medical treatment. And we learned that my son had been infected with the agent. The military police that has supplied me with the special protective mask had been giving expired and ineffective masks to my son. 
masks that senior officials had already worn and then discarded when they ceased to protect them. My own masks, on the other hand, had always been of necessary quality. I suppose they decided that my son was of lower priority than me. I suppose my son could not help them with their cover-up. We had long ago decided that we would be different. We would be honest with him, always. And so when he asked us, we told him the truth. We told him that he was very sick. He asked more, and we told him he would not get better. He continued asking, and we told him that he would die. He is very small, but he was old enough to understand. His terrified wails will haunt me for the rest of my miserable days in this world. Let them come. Let them do with me as they will. I no longer care. By Wuhan virus was dropped. So I wanted to read that. And it is really tragic what is going on right now. With this agent. I won't even call it coronavirus anymore. Because that's a lie. It's a it's a, a biochemical weapon, an agent that unfortunately got released. And such evil is spreading. And according to this um, Chinese intelligence officer, there is no there's no hope for anybody to survive. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, in light of this, I have peace in Jesus Christ. I have peace in my Lord and my Savior. And I believe the only way to respond to such a pandemic is to be sure of your eternal destination is to have security in Christ. That you need to be saved. Believe the gospel and be saved. You need Jesus right now more than ever. We all need him. We all need him. God forbid that if any of us get affected, hopefully by some miracle, this virus is, not virus, this dangerous bioweapon, and this agent is stopped and a cure somehow is, um, is invented, right? But until then, This is something that will affect many all over the world. As it's affecting millions, even I'm hearing one billion Chinese persons are infected. And that number is just going to grow and spread through all the countries around the world. So the time is now. The time is now to believe the gospel and receive eternal life. Eternal life that even when you die, you're still living. You're still alive in God. You will never die an eternal death. You may die physically, but you will live on in paradise. That's what people need right now. That's what people need to know. Amidst all this suffering, we need to receive the hope that is only found in Christ, in Jesus. So please believe and trust in Jesus today. Time is short. Time is very short.